I said I wouldn't do any trading this week, but I literally could not resist this trade. So this is a buy on GPCAD on the five minute charts. Now you can't see this, but there was a nice area of resistance on the one hour time frame, which was really, really good. I then went down to the lower time frames, the five minutes, seen the MACD and RSI had crossed over, as you can see there perfectly, and we popped a Mogwai arrow. Now this particular setup went to around 37 pips. I closed this trade off at 10 pips, so a kind of nice in and out scalp trade there. That was a beautiful 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 setup this is my trading results for the last six months ending 2020 so as you can see 100% in July August was 81% September 89 October 84 November 85 and December 100% and to start my 2021 trading if I click on here, another 100%. So an awesome, awesome, awesome start to the year. Super excited. Yeah, I'm happy. Hi everyone, my name is Jamie Palmer. Welcome to another episode with the Buy and Destroyer. So welcome to 2021. I hope you had an awesome 2020. I know it was a very difficult time of the whole pandemic and lockdown, but I feel it opened up a lot of opportunities uh, for people to kind of earn in a kind of side income or passive income, whether that's from trading online or kind of an online business or whatever. I think just going into 2021 now, a lot of people are kind of realizing that having a day job is not necessarily guaranteed uh, and they're looking for kind of a side income. So if that's you, I hope you have an awesome 2021 and I hope you are successful at whatever you plan to do. Now in today's video, I'm going to tell you something that nobody, in fact, I've never actually seen anybody talk about this. And yeah, I'm going to be the first person to do it. Okay. Now the reason why I want to do it is because I know this year there's going to be a lot of people out there selling you the online trading dream that you want to trade like this, you want to trade like an institutional because, because they always make money. Now I'm going to show you something, I'm going to tell you something right now that will probably completely change the way you see the markets. So yeah, grab yourself a cup of coffee and I hope you enjoy the next five or ten minutes. So there's this myth in trading that institutional traders always win and retail traders always lose. Uh, and there seems to be kind of this unequal balance between retail, retail traders not knowing anything, they don't know how to trade and they just lose money, and institutional traders, hedge fund traders know everything and they're just there to kind of take out retail traders. And it's actually kind of funny because it's in fact not true. There's this guy that follows, I follow on Facebook, he kind of adverts keep popping up about him. And he says that he's been trading for a bank for 15 years now and what you retail retail traders have been taught is totally wrong. You want to trade like this, like me, who's an institutional trader, because all we do is win and retail traders lose. And I'm actually going to show you now why that's just pure wrong. It's just all wrong. Okay. Now, if you want to be good at something, what do you do? You go and find the people that are good at it and you copy them, you take the online courses, you, you listen to what they do, and ultimately you get the same results. So if you want to be a institutional trader, let's say, you find some of the best traders out there that have mastered it and that are successful at it, and you copy them. You take their online courses, read their books, and listen to what they do. So if these so-called institutional traders know it all, and they're always winning, let's actually have a look now at some of the best institutional hedge fund traders currently right now, and not only right now, probably of my current time and decade. Now, I've actually got a rope down here. You've got Paul Dutra Jones, George Shores, Jim Simons, uh, Bill Atkins, and obviously the world most famous, Warren Buffett. Now, Warren Buffett um, is arguably considered one of the most richest people in the world. Uh, everybody knows this guy. He's one of the world's most famous investors, traders, uh, and business owners. Now, you've got Paul Tudor Jones as well. 
arguably considered as well one of the best traders. You've got uh, Jim Simons. Jim Simons, in fact, owns a medallion trading account. So he had all these own funded accounts where basically if you're an investor, you invest your money with these people. Um, they invest it into stocks, businesses, currency pairs, whatever it is, uh, give you a profit back and then they take a percentage of that. So they're hedge fund traders. Now, Jim Simons owns a medallion uh, hedge fund and it's actually done really, really well. Now, in fact, that actual hedge fund was capped at 10 billion pound, 10 billion. He could not take any more investments because if he did, he would have so much money, every time he took a trade, it would move the market, which is not what he wanted to do. So he actually capped his uh, hedge fund account at 10 billion. Uh, and that's it. These, these traders out there don't have access to millions, they have access to billions. They literally are at the top of their game. There's no other better traders than these people here. Okay, they, like I said, they apparently own the world, they run the world, and they're always winning, and they're better than everybody else. If that's true, let's look at their performances for the last few years. Well, Paul Judah Jones, last year, actually only made 12% gain on his account. In, in 2019, he in fact made a loss. In 2018, he made a loss. In 2017, he made profit. George Shaw's only up 10% last year. Jim Simons, his medallion fund is actually doing really well. It's up 66%. Warren Buffett has actually been down these last few years. Uh, he's, in fact, the FTSE 500 has done better than Warren Buffett has over the last few years. But again, he has a lot of money tied up in Coca-Cola and other business, so it's not really affected them that much. And then we've got Bill Atkins. Bill Atkins, in fact, made a trade last year that was, in fact, he made last year one trade that took him home a hundred million pound uh, trade, yeah, which is absolutely insane, a hundred million pound trade. And the way he did it, in fact, was he invested a lot of his money into, he bought a lot of stocks in, I think it was insurance companies. And in fact, he actually over leveraged his account. So he kept taking all these positions on insurance companies and he over leveraged his position. He basically was selling these insurance companies and ultimately it paid off. It made him a hundred million dollars in one trade. But you know what? If it went wrong, he was in serious trouble. He massively over leveraged his position, which was risky but again you know he was confident I suppose he knew what he was doing but if you actually look at the performance of some of these hedge fund traders they're not actually that great like I said 10% up last year from Paul Tudor Jones last year he made a loss uh, George Soros again made a 10% gain this year he did make a small 4 or 5% uh, gain last year but what you want to take from this is they're not doing 100% wins they're not tripling their accounts, doubling their accounts every single year. These people are supposed to arguably be the best traders, best institutional hedge fund traders of the all time, and they're only achieving 10, 20% a year, which in, in your terms is not very good. Yes, 10 billion, 20% uh, of 10 billion is a large amount of money. It's very, very good. But you would think if these guys are the best traders in the world, they'd be pulling in 100%, tripling their accounts every single year. But they don't. So when people, what's funny is when people come to me and they say, Jamie, you know, I, I want to double my account every single month. You know, I want to have five guaranteed wins every single day. Is that possible? And the simple answer is, well, look at some of the best traders in the world. Are they doing that? No, they're not. So you are living in a complete dream world. Now, what I want you to take from this is I want you to understand that there really is no difference between an institutional trader and a hedge and a retail trader. The only difference is, is one's a job, one's a professional, and one's a retail trader trading at home. So for example, I'm a retail trader. If I was to go down London, get a job as a trader or for some hedge fund trader, I would instantly become an institutional trader. Now, the way I trade doesn't trade. I can still trade the binary destroyer down in London with this hedge fund trader. 
The only difference is, is I'm now doing it as a profession, as a job, compared to where I was doing it at home. That is the only difference. You'd not, being an institutional trader doesn't necessarily mean you know more and you are a better trader than a retail trader. It's just totally not true when you actually look at the facts and how well some of these hedge funds and institutional traders are doing. They're not really doing that well. Like I said, Paul Judah Jones last year made a loss. You know, that, that's not great. I mean, I made a profit last year. So does that mean I'm a better trader? Who knows? But the point that I'm trying to explain here is that, sorry that. So the one bit of advice I want you to take from this video is for you to understand that there really is no difference between a retail trader and an institutional trader. If you're a retail trader, okay, you're still gonna get losses, you're still gonna get wins, you're still gonna get good days and bad days. Like I said, look at some of the best institutional hedge fund traders currently right now. They're doing okay. Like I said, Paul Judy Jones made a loss last year. Okay, so understand that, but retail, institutional, doesn't really make no difference, you're still gonna get losses. And the reason being is because you're never gonna be able to predict every single market move. The way the market moves is supply and demand. A lot of people buy in, currency pairs, stocks go up. A lot of people sell, stocks and currency pairs go down. It also moves from market manipulation, banks maybe move the markets, maybe market makers, maybe world economy, maybe the pound is doing weak, which drives the pound down, maybe Donald Trump says something, drives the dollar up. Okay, all these different factors moves currency pairs and stocks, so you're never gonna be able to predict every single move. There's not one person, not one entity that knows every single move that happens, okay? And that's one thing I want you to remember. Going into 2021, I want you to just focus. If you're trading the BD, if you're not, if you're trading something else, just focus on your trading, your strategy, and kind of building a plan around it, working out why your trades win, why your trades lose, and ultimately minimize the losses, maximize the profits. Stop trying to kind of chase this kind of idea that you want to win every single time because it won't happen. Like I said, you know, I'm a retail trader. I like to keep everything simple. The more easy it is, the more easier trading becomes. And I understand that I'm going to have losses if I overcomplicate my trading, make it very difficult, learn some hard strategy, become an institutional trader, then become a hedge fund trader makes no difference. I'm still going to have losses. I'm still going to have good and bad days. So like I said, going into 2021, make your trading easier and then focus on yourself. So yeah, I hope you took something from this video and yeah, I hope you have a successful 2021.